Hello, everyone. Thank you all for joining me today. I'm very honored to share how to develop BPF tools with like BPF and BPF CRE at Corner Life Europe. First of all, let me introduce myself a little bit. My name is Wen Bo Zhang. I come from Pincap, the company behind TidyB, and am an active contributor to Lab BPF tools. I was fortunate to get a lot of help from Andre Nagliko, who is a Lab BPF and BPF CRE projects leader, then I was contributing to Lab BPF tools. I learned a lot from him and the community, and I enjoyed communicating with them. Now let's get on to the topic. I will share my experience about writing BPF applications with the Lab BPF. I hope this topic is helpful to those who are interested in Lab BPF, and it could inspire them to further develop and improve BPF applications with Lab BPF. So let's see what's BPF CRE first. Before talking about this concept, let's think about what BPF portability is. We know that the development of the kernel is very rapid. Although backward compatibility can be guaranteed at the system core layer, changes within the kernel subsystem do not guarantee this compatibility. When we use BPF for system tracing, we often need to get function parameters with fields in the struct and so on. Obviously, BPF projects need to face this compatibility problem. Therefore, we need to clarify the portability of BPF. So BPF portability is the ability to write a BPF program that will successfully compile parse kernel verification and will work correctly across different kernel versions without the need to recompile it for each particular kernel. The solution of BPF portability is BPF CRE. Some people may have some doubts on the necessity of BPF CRE. When we use the BCC, it seems that we didn't encounter any compatibility issues. So why the why do we need this new thing? The answer is yes, we need it. The reason is that although the emergencies of BP BOBCC is a major improvement in the BPF development experience, it has some notable shortcomings. It uses the C long front end to modify your written BPF programs. When a, when a problem occurs, it's difficult to find the problem and figure out a solution. You have to remember naming uh, conventions and automatically generated trace point structures. Because the lab BCC library contains a huge LLVM and CLON library, when you use it, you might encounter some issues. When the tool starts, it takes mining CPU and memory resources to compile the BPF program. If it runs on a server that lacks system resources, it might trigger a problem. BCC depends on kernel header packages, which you have to install on each target host. If you need to export it context in the kernel, you have to manually copy and pass the tab definition into the BPF code. Because BPF programs are compiled during runtime, many simple compilation errors can only be detected at runtime. This affects your development experience. By, con by contrast, BPF CIE has these advantages. When you implement BPF CRE, you can directly use the lab BPF library provided by kernel developers to develop BPF programs. The development method is the same as writing ordinary C user mode programs. One compilation generates a small binary file. 
let BPF acts like a BPF program loader and relocates loads and check BPF programs. BPF developers only need to focus on the BPF program's correctness and performance. This approach minimizes overhead and removes huge dependence, which makes the overall development process smoother. This is why we need BPF CRE and why is the future of BPF. That's the high level BPF CRE mechanism. BPF CRE only consists of four parts BPF type information, compiler, BPF loader, kernel. I will walk you through one by one. BTF type information which allows to capture uh, crucial pieces of information about kernel and BPF program types and codes. It enables all the other parts of BPF CLRE puzzle. What's exciting is that in the latest kernel version 5.11, kernel has been implemented support for model BTF. Compiler provides means for BPF program C code to express their intent and record relocation information. BPF loader ties BTFs from kernel and BPF program together to adjust the compiled BPF code to specify kernel on target host. Kernel, while staying completely BPF CRE agnostic, provides advanced BPF features to enable some of the more advanced scenarios. Let's see a hello world with live BPF. As mentioned before, the BPF application is divided into two parts. The BPF program that needs to be loaded into the kernel and the control part. On the left part of the figure, it's a very simple BPF tracing program. And it's triggered when the right system core is initiated. It gets the process ID that triggered the right request and print it out. The part of the right is the stand process. Let's talk more about it. BPF skeleton in BPF app lifestyle. BPF application typically goes through the following phases. Open files. BPF object file is parsed. BPF maps, BPF programs, and global variables are discovered, but not yet created. After the BPF map is, uh, app is opened, it's possible to make any additional adjustments. For example, setting BPF program tabs if necessary, presetting initial values for global values, and so on. Before all the uh, entities are created and loaded. Load files. BPF maps are created, various relocations are resolved. BPF programs are loaded into the kernel and verified. At this point, all the parts of BPF application are validated and exist in kernel, but no BPF program is yet executed. After the load phase, it's possible to set up initial BPF map state without racing with the BPF program code execution. Attach files. This is a file at which BPF programs get attached to various BPF hook points, such as trace points, key probes, C group hooks, network package processing pipeline, and so on. This is a file at which BPF starts performing useful work and read or, upt or update BPF maps and global variables. The last file is teardown files. BPF programs are detached and unloaded from the kernel. 
BPF maps are destroyed and all the resources used by the BPF app are freed. So generated BPF skeleton has corresponding functions to trigger each phase. Name open creates and opens BPF application. Name load is tested loads and verifies BPF application parts. Name attach attaches all out touchable BPF programs. This is optional and you can have more control by using the BPF APIs directly. Name destroy detaches all BPF programs and frees up all used resources. Now we replaced the name with minimal, which looks like the picture on the right. So in attention to these typical faces, there are a few small tips about the faces to share with you. Let's see this. We mentioned earlier that some setup work can be done after the open phase, but if there are no such requirements, we can combine the load phase and the open phase together. The example in the figure comes from the lab BPF object project, which is used to measure the cost of out pneuma. Look at this one. By default, BPF skeleton will automatically attach all BPF programs. But sometimes we don't want to do this. We'd rather selectively attach certain BPF programs based on command line parameters. So we can attach manually as shown in the figure. This is tool from the lab, BP, lab BPF tools project to detach the delay of the block layer. Now look at this. Earlier, we mentioned that the program can be attached manually. For this had two obvious shortcomings. One is that we load an unnecessary BPF program. In addition, we can't use the standard, stand, uh, stand faces well, and the code looks uh, unclear. So the community added a new API to control whether to load the BPF program automatically. This is tool from the Live BPF tools project for starting the delay distribution of some methods in EST4. If this tool runs on the new version of the kernel and supports model BTI, then we choose to load F entry BPF program. Otherwise, we fall back to load the capable programs. Look at this. Skeleton chain is suitable for almost all scenarios, but there is a special case, perfect events. In this case, instead of using links from struct name BPI, we need to define an array struct BPF links, link links. The reason is that BPF, uh, the reason is that perfect event needs to be opened stability for each CPU. After this, open and attach perfect event by yourself. Finally, during the teardown phase, remember to destroy each link in the links and then destroy links. Starting in version 0.2, Live BPF supports multiple entry point BPF programs within the same executable and linkable format section. Therefore, you can attach multiple BPF programs to the same event, such as trace points or cable ropes, without worrying about ERF section name clashed. For details, see at 
lab BPF for support for BPF after BPF course. Now you can natural, uh, naturally define multiple handlers for an event like shown on the right. Before that, you need to define two different event types for the same event. You may be aware that right? at the present, we have only seen like BPF API related and didn't see that is anything, it has anything to do uh, with the portability of BPF. Then we will now introduce some programming context related to BPF theory. Let's first look at how to achieve BPF portability in reading structure members. BCC way. BCC will convenient, uh, conveniently rewrite task uh, point PID into a call to BPF appropriate, which is great. Though sometimes might not work, depending on the complexity of an expression used. With lab BPF, because it doesn't help BCC code writing magic at its disposal. There are a few ways you can achieve the same result. So if you're using recently added BPF program type of tracing BPF programs, then you have a smartness of BPF welfare on your side, which now understands and tracks BTF tabs nat uh, natively and allows you to follow pointers and read kernel memory directly and safely, avoiding PPF probe read cores. So you don't need complete rewriting magical to read the seamless and familiar uh, syntax. Pairing this uh, functionality with BPF CRE to support portable, um, allocatable field reads, you have to um, enclose this code into built in preserve exercise index compiler built in. For non CRE lab BPF way. Now, with CRE and lab BPF, there are two ways to do this. One directly replacing BPF appropriate with BPF core rate. BPF core rate is a simple macro which passes all the adjustments directly to BPF appropriate but it also makes the Ceylon record field of site relocation for search arguments. By parsing it through built-in preserve access index. So the last example is actually just this at the hood. You may have a question. If a field has been removed from the struct, is there a way to deal with this situation? The answer is yes. You can use BPF core field exist macro to do this. So how to deal with kernel API changes? Another scenario that causes BPF compatibility issues is the kernel API changes. For this case, BPF CRE provides two complementary solutions. Lab BPF provided external key config variables and struct flavors. Lab BPF provides externs are uh, a simple idea. BPF programs can define an uh, external variable with a well-known name, such as Linux kernel version to extract a running kernel version of a name that matches one of key uh, 
quick fix are keys, such as config HD, to get the value of HD that the kernel was built with. And that BPF will do its magic to set everything up in such a way that your BPF program can use such external variables as any other global variables. As these variables will help crack values matching the active kernel your BPF program is executed in. Additionally, BPF verifier will check those variables as known a uh, constraint and will be able to use them for advanced control flow uh, analysis and that code as a an emulsion. Here is an example of dealing with trace point interface compatibility. After contribute, uh, after um, introducing how to deal with BPF compatibility issues, let's take a look at how to pass control information to BPF programs. BCC's approach is achieved through string replacement. Because the BPF program is a string for BCC and can be modified at will. At will. If BCC is not used, uh, the traditional approach is to write configuration information into the map. This method is not efficient, although the information written in the mic is static. The BPF verifier can't recognize this situation. So some optimization can be made. The solution to such a admittedly a complicated use case is through using read-only global update. Is set once by a control application before the BPF program is loaded into a kernel. From the BPF program side, this looks like a normal uh, global variable exercise. There won't be any BPF Mac lookup overhead. Global variables are implemented as a directory memory exercise. Control application side will set initial configuration variables or values before BPF program is loaded. So by the time BPF verifier will go to uh, validation of a, BP, uh, for a, a, prop, a program, configuration values will be well known and read only. This will allow BPF Refer to check them as known constants and use its advanced control flow analysis. So here is the example. We can naturally pass some filter uh, conditions to the BPF program, such as PID that we want to filter and so on. Next, Let's talk about the storage related content. Beginning in Linux uh, 4.6, BPF hash maps perform memory pre uh, location by default and introduce the BPF I have no uh, pre log flag. The motivation for doing so is to avoid key problem and BPF with BPF deadlocks. The community has tried other solutions, but in the end, pre allocating all the map elements was the simplest solution and didn't affect the user space with both behavior. When full map pre allocation, allocation Allocation is to memory expensive. Define the map with the BPF 
have no pre-log flag to keep all the behavior. For details, see PVF map pre-log. When the map size is not large, for example, is 256, this flag is not necessary. PPF have no pre-log is slower. One advantage of live BPF is that it's portable. So the maximum space required for the map may be different for different machines. In this case, you can define the map without specifying the size and resize it before the load. For example, in the name DM BPF DSC, Define the map as this. After the open phase, call BPF map resize to set the correct max size. Not only you can use global variables to uh, customer size. Uh, customize BPF program topic uh, logic. You can use them instead of maps to make your program simpler and more efficient. Global variables can be any size. You just need to set BPF variables to be a fixed size, or at least with a bounded maximum size if you don't mind wasting some memory. For example, because the number of soft IRQ tabs is fixed, you can define global uh, arrays to save counts and histograms in soft BFDC. Then you can traverse the Right directly in user space. Furthermore, if you want to know more details, you can read the following articles. The first two articles were written by BPF uh, maintainer, which is very valuable and tells a lot of knowledge related to the uh, principle. The last one was written by me, uh, mainly related to uh, actual compile. If you want to try it out, you can start with the following two projects, and you can play uh, it uh, after reading this. Uh, this is our complex uh, communication. If you have any questions, you can leave a message on this. Uh, at last, uh, um, uh, please let me introduce our company again. Uh, PinCap is a software uh, service provider committed to delivering one-stop and provides great database solutions. TiDB is an open source distributed new uh, circle, uh, new SQL uh, database for elastic scale and real time analytics. That's all. Thank you. <music>